Welcome to Center of Light, all my brother and sister astronauts. Prepare yourself as we launch for inner space. Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Enfoldment and Reinforcement. Radio to ignite your soul. Set you aglow, set you on fire. And the Transformation Station. I'm your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard, also known as Yanava. It's my spiritual name. It's everyone's spiritual name. Sacred seed syllables, the essence of who we are. Ya, the heart. God, will. Na, the mind, reasoning, discernment. And va, the backbone, which is action. These primordial sacred seed syllables of your ancient self. How juicy and delicious is that? Welcome to the show tonight, my presentation, my interview with Mr. Dwayne Hartman, Awakening the God Within. We're going to be talking about magic. Not necessarily magic, but the magic of life. How to wield yourself, will yourself in such a way. Align yourself in such a way that effort, strain, and struggle simply just falls by the wayside. Tonight we're going to be talking about alchemy. In many different other, other things in different guises, different labels. Alchemy, turning a bad situation, something that is heavy in your life like lead, into something that is pure, like gold, kind of things. Who knows where we're going to go with this presentation. <laughs> we're probably going to go to the moon and back. Uh, let me give you some announcements. I'm going to do a little intro here. We're going to take a short pause and bring my powerful guest, uh, Mr. Dwayne Hartman, onto the show. One thing I liked about Dwayne immediately is when I watched him and did my research to find some guests, his voice will pull you in. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous that uh, being in radio, uh, his voice is just so soothing. It's, it's very vibrational. And there's a reason for it. So we're going to get to that shortly. Let me tell you a little bit about what's happening. Uh, i got to pay the bills. In the near future, Four Points Spiritual Expo, September 21st and 22nd. Presented, uh, created by Circle of Chi. That's Circle of QI. You can get on Facebook. It's a holistic event to bring people together who are seeking information about alternative health, organic living, overall well-being. I'm going to be a keynote speaker. Larry Flaxman, Discovery Channel, Ancient Aliens, keynote speaker. Jeanette, uh, Jeanette Lynette Marie. Um, Dr. Rita Louise, there's going to be healers, there's going to be best-selling authors, speakers all day long. There's going to be gemstones, best-selling authors, teachers, this beautiful event. But it's not per se about coming there to look at some vending booths and have a good time on your weekend. It's about involving yourself into something that is spectacular. You want spectacular, spectacular in your life? Show up. If you're from out of town... You don't live in the Memphis area. Road trips are always fun. Grab some knuckleheads with you. Get them in the car. Take turns driving. Come to Memphis, Tennessee. Come a day early. I play music all over the city. Come hang out with me. I'll get you all a table. We wake up in the morning. We go to the Agra International Center here in Memphis, Tennessee for this powerful event. You want more information about that event and what it's all about. $20 for both days. $15 a day. $10 for the keynote speakers. Keynote speakers, these people know what they're doing. Dr. Loretta Louise is going to be another keynote speaker. She is a powerhouse. She can challenge experts in their field, and she is just a newbie. And she can skate on very thin ice. Trust me. I love me some Dr. Loretta Louise. Center of Light Radio. Tomorrow night, my guest is going to be Madra Gale Little. And we're going to talk be talking about what is ascension? Not the media hype, not all the quirky stuff that people are just throwing out there like next week cookie. <laughs> what is ascension and what does it mean for us? Thursday night on Center of Light Radio is going to be Robert Wagoner. And we're going to be speaking about, wow, one of my favorite subjects, lucid dreaming. Wow, lucid dreaming, I love it. In fact, lucid dreaming is res partly responsible for me doing what I do, my work. 
I love being in a full-blown conscious state that is beyond this body. I'm not trying to escape the body. I'm trying to incorporate the body. So I want to get to the other side so I can amalgamate these two experiences. In fact, I get the sneaking suspicion that we're going to be talking about a lot of, a lot of this stuff tonight on Center of Light Radio. My guest is Dwayne Hartman, Awakening the God Within. We all simply have the ability to do that. And it starts with a choice. Remember that all things are possible. You must choose to be accountable, responsible, enough to believe, and open your heart to receive. Welcome back to Center of Light Radio. Keith Anthony Blanchard here, your host. It's good to see all you beautiful in the chat, beautiful people in the chat room. Uh, I could go through the list. I want to get down to this show. Just know that I love you. I appreciate you being here, as well as you appreciate 
something to do on this Tuesday night that could feed your spirit, feed your soul in a way that just uplifts you and makes you strive a little harder for that golden ring. And it's not out of reach. It's right there. It's right there. You just got to reach. You just got to reach for it. It's right there. Reach. Time to get down to center of light radio beeswax. Let me I tell you a little bit about my guest tonight. His bio is this long, which is a good thing. He, he's done his work. Let me see if I can cherry pick to capture the essence, and then we're going to bring Mr. Dwayne Hartman on Center of Light Radio. Dwayne Hartman enjoys the magic of his work, a career that spans more than 20 years. He is a truly gifted in bringing you to a high vibrational healing, rapid internal state changes and new manifestation practices that will change your reality. Emotional vibration is at the core of all reality. What Dwayne specializes in is helping you change the core vibration where your reality stems from. His ability to elicit higher states of vibration and consciousness from within you is the best in the world. Change happens Change will happen. It's just a little tricky on my eyes. Change happens will happen now with you, leaving you empowered and free. He will teach you to come into your own power. The divine rest right here. That which creates worlds and universes lives right here. Dwayne, Dwayne will teach you how to come into your own power, undo, undoing years, undoing years of societal. Hypnosis that has left you powerless. Having the chance to be in his presence, one feels the magic and freedom of life again. With thousands of sessions and hundreds of students to date, his art of trance alchemy is a therapy that is truly quick, complete, and mind-blowing simple. Because of Dwayne's intuitive spirit, spiritual wisdom, dedication, and years of experience, you can feel comfortable he will deliver a new state of mind that will transform your reality into joy and self-control. All you need to do is be is all you need to do is be coachable and dedicated to your transformation with an audience of people that span all over the world. He not only works online personally with you, but he also tours the world doing lectures and training, creating a vibrational ripple of effect of awakening the God consciousness within you. On his path to creating trance alchemy, Dwayne became a certified clinical hypnotherapist. He is highly trained in NLP other than conscious communication other than conscious communication and advanced language patterns, he also joined, enjoyed, oh boy, I am so tongue-tied, he enjoyed studying Dr. Milton Erickson, Dr. David Dobson, Richard Bandler, and Larry McLaughlin. The influence of all his early mentors helped to expand the magic in his mind for the creation of trance alchemy. You can find more about my guest at www.dwaynehartman.com. That is www.d-u-a-i-n-e hartman.com. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, my brand new friend. Hello. How are you? I'm fantastic, brother. How are you doing this evening? You can hear me okay? Hear you just Good. fine. Welcome to the show, Good. sir. Nice well, to meet you, and you. I, I'm looking forward to understanding, learning, initiating integration, and moving to a greater glory of what you have to offer all of us. How are you, brother? Things are well in your world, staying busy? I'm delightful, yes. <laughs> delightful and magical. I, I, I do it all day long, you know, like it's, uh, it's almost like a, a, well, it's a normal for me, you know, you wake yeah. up and you work with people and you see them light up with this freedom and magic uh it's it's something that you know isn't my work it's it's who i am right I dig that. that and there's no way you cannot do it would that be correct no you don't, no in fact you don't have a choice in the matter 
<laughs> no, that's exactly right. Yes, that part of you yes. has died. That part of you has died. That part of you is transformed. Just like with me, there's no way I can go back, even if I wanted to. That door has been cracked open. That part of what I knew as me back when is deceased. That's right, uh, and and that's the the thing that people need to make a choice about uh, with themselves, because. Um, you know, like I, I teach, there's two consciousnesses. There's the 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 social uh, hypnotized consciousness that we were all, you know, uh, watch the watch, uh, all coming in as. But we were a God consciousness before that, and uh, and that that we make a choice between what we're going to what what we what we're going to relate to within ourselves. Who are we really? You know, all of us talk about this, this aspect of ourself that was freer, more magical, everything else when we were younger, but yet we still try to keep up with this societal hypnosis and being an identity in that. So things get really magical when you come back to your true nature. Dwayne, I want to I want to ask you this question, and it's very important. I feel because of where I am located in the world, the Bible Belt. Nothing against it. That's just a word that is used to describe the level of experience and consciousness that is dominant here. Yes. So tonight, for those who are my friends locally that might be in this room, I put your bio up under the the banner today. I'm gonna we're gonna be speaking about magic, alchemy sorcery you know all manipulating energy and then all of a sudden these people see this good-looking man <laughs> with this amazing voice on this screen with the eye of Ra or Horus behind him right so let's demystify debunk what someone may be um, sensitive to about what it is you do well um, it, pertaining to the eye Pertaining to the idea that someone may be not sure of what it is you do as an alchemist, as a person delivering messages of spirit in the way that you do it, they auto most uh, many people automatically want to withdraw from. Oh my God, this is not the normal way it's done to reach a higher plateau. We call it God, Christianity, Jesus, whatever, whatever labels we give it. Basically, how is what you do, and it doesn't have to be religiously, follow that as well. How do you parallel your work with something they may be accustomed to and can easily take in? Well, um, it, it's, it, it starts with this love, love for source itself or love for God. Okay, let's take a look at that. A lot of people love God. They say, I love God, but yet... Um, are they, are they even admitting that they're related to God? You know, um, are they admitting that, that they're one with this God? Uh, a lot of times what we have is people that look at themselves as being under and way under, uh, this is supposed to be a loving God that, uh, we all, um, connect, supposed to connect with or pray to, but yet, if we take a look at it seriously, there was nothing around to create everything out of. God had to create it out of itself. So by default, you're God. By default, you are it. And it's a perception that's keeping you trapped in an illusion that's very painful by not admitting who you are. Yes, it is, sir. And scripture of any sort will tell you that God is omnipresent. So if the yes. dictionary is our resource for language, it's a collective agreement manifested through Webster's that this is we what we all understand collectively agree this word is going to mean. So if we look in the dictionary under omnipresence, it says present in all places at all times. That means it's in my shirt, it's in my eyes, it's in the words you're hearing, it's the words you speak, it's everything. And the only thing that separates us, as you're describing, from the very essence, God is the naturalness of everything. What separates us from that is, one, the belief that we're separate from it, or two, 
do we dare begin to imagine the idea that we're not? That's it. So it's God's in your shirt, omnipresent. Then why not God be you? There are some old teachings, old teachings. They're they're the the Hermetica, the 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 old stuff that talks about this. Uh, you know, who are we? Uh, who are we not to be this aspect? If you want to know God, the best way to know God is to become God, is to become that, and. And that, yeah, this is, you know, shaky ground for some people. They're going, whoa, you know, this, this is too much. But in the sense, this is where all of this pressure in our society is taking us. If we don't finally admit who we are at some point, we won't be able to change it. We're not going to be able to change anything. If we don't, because this is the point of it, I feel, is the pressure that's being put upon us in society and we're seeing all of this stuff going on. If we don't pop into our own state and manifest our own reality away from what's going on, our own personal reality, right? And that's what's really been taken from us, is our own personal reality. And we're, we're a collective group reality, the societal reality, that really, I don't know about you, but it doesn't really smack of anything that you know, I want any more, right? <laughs> totally. <laughs> and so, Dwayne, in a way, to demystify, to put a cushion on all this, you know, and you look at your screen and it's black and it's got this big eye, right? That's just all nonsense. So to demystify and let some of the air out of this so overdue misunderstanding is we are all, Alchemists. We're all trying to turn the shit in the world into gold by exactly. being by being connected to the power source, God that lives in all. I am in my Father. My Father's in me, and I am in you. And those two components are within you. So if it's within me, what is keeping us from that? It's those things that we describe: the barriers, the fears, the jealousies, the insecurities, all those things that fall under the umbrella of being disconnected or the illusion of being disconnected exactly it's that it's what we've been taught as blasphemy what is blasphemy you know to 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 say that you're you're in that that and we're everyone's running around afraid of something they don't even know what the meaning is anymore you know what i mean like societally we've went down this 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 avenue where we're afraid of uh, afraid of this blasphemy statement, but yet we don't even know what it truly means to be afraid of it. I mean, uh, admit that you are related to your own source, to your own God, you, that you are it, right? And so in that fear, in that fear, uh, people, people shy away from it, from owning a, a, a very beautiful energy within you when you connect with this it's a very beautiful energy that rises up and you're connected to all things uh the shirt because you're omnipresent you become omnipresent you soon discover that you're you're you will never be born nor will you ever die because you're not living from a point that is uh, a construct. The construct is is literally if we go back in time and take a look at us as babies, we came into this world connected. Right? And very shortly, you know, by the time we're five years old, we're really hypnotized to leave that consciousness alone. Don't talk about fairies. Don't talk about the fact that you see multidimensionally. Don't talk about that because you're going to get locked up is what the, the message was. Don't talk about that. So all of us took that and shoved it aside and created a mask. And we live in this, we put this societal mask on. 
We live in this mask. We try to have manifestations happen and, and, and magic happen, but it's from a false reality. It's from a programmed reality. And if you don't think it's programmed, just watch TV for half an hour. Uh, <laughs> they're programming you. It's called TV programming for a reason. They're programming you to be a certain way, eat a certain way, do a certain thing. And that's where you're going to find acceptance. You'll never find acceptance in society. You'll find acceptance when you come inside yourself and feel that. And then people stop running for this so-called acceptance that they never reach. That carrot is always just a little too far out in front. Coming in and accepting self and going back to that, that, ex that, that child memory of and opening that up and being playful again and being creative again. Yeah. There's a love there that's so profound when you connect back to that place in us. And it's in every bird. You start looking at birds differently. I mean, yeah, you start looking at all animals because you can see that life in that that life you itself can see is the God life, itself. Yes, you can see the life stream moving in everything. Using an example of the, the master Christ from his life, according to scripture. He's in the desert and he's about to become seriously on fire illumined in God's grace. And the <clears throat> devil, if you follow that myth the idea, shows up. It still makes it one hell of a point, no pun intended. So the devil shows up mm -hmm. and shows the master, soon to be master, this illusionary world says, bow down to me and I will offer you all these worldly riches. And he didn't because he knew that the creation itself came from God within himself. He did call you brother slash sister. What happened, that illusion that you were speaking of so poetically, sir, is that though he refuted it, knowing it wasn't real, we as humans have bought into it. That's yeah. the illusion. We keep buying into the illusion of the exterior world versus the truth of the source that lives within all of us. Thank you for that. How did you get into all this, bro? I always ask three, com three questions of my guests. The beginning is... What brought you into this? And then the meat and potatoes of the entire interview. And then at closure, I'll ask you that question. But how did you shift into this lifestyle? I, I, I was born that way. I, I came in. I remembered, I remembered when when I was a child this this image and this feeling of holding two orbs in my hands. And I held them to my chest, and then I loved myself into being here. And I remember that vividly. And I would tell my parents different things about things I wouldn't have any idea about, like their wedding. You know, I told them I was there, and I described it. And I remember being this, this little light ball flying around looking at everything before it happened. But... But there was this 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 experience of of uh, the very first thing that I was hit with coming in this way was guilt for remembering, and it's part of the vibration here. And other people that I have talked to that have remembered coming in, they remember this guilt of bringing this information. And uh, now I know on the, on the, on, on the level of source, there's no guilt for not, you know, there's no guilt for love and information and sharing. So it is of the 3D that, that guilt happens, right? But, uh, sometimes I drift off on tangents. You have to bring me back. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh you're good, brother. I'm I'm so just lying in the energy, just like <laughs> Calgon, take me away. What's up, Calgon? <laughs> so so how did I get into it? I was born this this way, feeling it. I remember having vivid visions when I was a child about seeing seeing people in this in this uh state, in this, you know, 
and wanting them to to come out. But I was just a kid. And when I would stand up on an Apple box and preach about this sort of thing to, to people, they would just laugh at me because I was three years old, four years old, right? You know, trying to tell, talk about that. Um, but let me ask I mean, you like this, any- when this was coming in for you, brother, <laughs> when this was coming in for you, I know there was a connection, a conscious one saying, you know, this is just a funky world and I'm submersed in it. But was it like a remembering or did you truly have an absolute planting, a knowing, or was it a little gray? No, it was a knowing. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it wasn't, it was annoying, but I, I, in all fairness, uh, I went through the hypnosis too. Okay. And school was a real bugger for me because uh, because as, as soon as I got there with this sort of ideas and you know uh, they soon had me in a you know in in a special needs <laughs> environment and you know trying to get you know this guy toned down because it was like you know they they would say that you know in Egypt you know they were towing them uh, towing the blocks across the desert on 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 uh, 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 on rollers and I go no they never you know they they levitated them into place and then you know thank so you I very was, much I, I want to make sure we, I want to let you continue but I want to make sure we don't forget about sound I told you audience at the beginning of this present this broadcast that his voice how jealous I was being a radio show and so he has that voice and Dwayne is definitely about sound I've said this many many times stones were not rolled into place they were levitated by sound if you look at the Buddhist monks and all their monasteries in Tibet there are no roads up there they created this sound circle with certain things that they would combine as a formula sound creates levitation light is information it's the detail and sound is the glue that holds it all together would you agree with that sir yes May I, may I do something? Oh, pfft, I dare you. <laughs> I hope it comes through the mic, okay? All right. So the t- the sound. And and the dual frequency, you were overtoning. Yeah, yeah, and and that can do a lot of things like clearing clearing energy. You know, I'm sure you're you om you do the deep, deep uh, om, you know these sorts of things. But we we have this these tones within us uh, that we that actually can clear. Uh, your energy field. I mean, it's kaboom, like a like a nova, you know. Yeah. When you did the chanting, I can feel my entire system resonate. When I was in India, on this holy man's ashram, I'm sitting in this room that held about forty people. It's called Super Bartam, and there's thirty five plus thousand people on the outside of this little room and another temple chanting and it's all funneled into this little room and when you have 40 plus whatever thousand people channeling and they're chanting the word om Mm -hmm. when i was in this room i began to vibrate so intensely i couldn't see everything clearly because the energy was so high and i was too monkey minded what's going on and oh my god this is happening i was all in that jibber jabber stuff and when they started to chant om 21 times i was literally vibrated out of my body I, my body just started to melt and I was in spirit mm-hmm. but the chanting is why you might find it in particular like Catholicism Amen. it's the same idea ah is always usually referred to God Jesus Sananda Yogananda Paramahansa uh, ah I get the joke ah aha that's enlightenment so I love the toning. Did you want to take us further down that toning path or tell us a little more about what it is you do with sound and your powerful voice, sir? Well, the, the, the vo- my, my voice itself reminds people of a place of home within them. Um, it, it's easy to come back to 
something that you mentioned in your movie about zero and then one. And the way that I looked at it when I heard that, I was very excited to hear it, was that was that because you resonate in the same place, is that zero is coming back to the infinite in us that has never been born and never died. No point zero. So the toning and whatever it is to to like you were mentioning about the monkey mind, you see, this is why I have I have the eye here, is because there's a place in us that's called the eye of Horus. And if you take the brain and you open it up, you will see the imprint of the eye of Horus right in the brain. And so when we drop out of the top part of our mind, which is that monkey mind, and we drop into this midbrain place in us, it's like a reset. It's like zero point energy. And I don't believe really that our pituitary and pineal gland are calcified. I just think they're in atrophy because we don't use it. We're up here all the time thinking about all kinds of monkey stuff, drunken monkey stuff, right? Yeah, I want my banana, I want my banana, I want my banana, I want my banana, and it just keeps looping on. <laughs> yeah, how do I get my banana? How do I get... Yeah. And so when we take a deep breath in, I have this real easy thing that people can... Three, with keep your eyes open, because you're going to need to want to see the change in your environment when you do this. And then slowly exhale and just let your awareness drop down into midbrain. And something starts to happen. We start to go peripheral in our vision. And the more we just practice that simple little thing, we, the more we drop out of this midbrain or the top part of our mind and into midbrain. And there we can start to explore going back into the back of the mind, doing different things, opening up your your energy. But this is ancient. I it's have this awareness technique. Dude, you, you and I were separated at birth, literally. I have this technique that I present to my audience often, which is an awareness, immediate awareness expansion technique. Yes, spirituality will take time, which is an illusion, for you to develop your craft and become a master of it. <clears throat> but to give, you know, why do Dwayne, why Dwayne, why Keith, why do people practice this for years until they receive results? If I don't see something right now and get instantly gratified, I ain't interested. I can go eat a McDonald's cheeseburger and have all the grace from God I want. But so I offer them a glimpse into their true self. And one is, would be a very short version of it. It's, as everyone is listening to me, looking at me and hearing my voice, keep focused on me no matter what I say. Then as you are focused on me, you don't shift. Become aware of the taste in your mouth, so you're doing two things. And as you're looking at me and you're aware of the taste in your mouth, become aware of the feeling on your skin. Become of what's next to you without changing your focus. Then you begin to expand yourself and you get a glimpse of what you really are. Now the work becomes, make this a default part of your life so that wherever you go, you're living in this expanded awareness state. I always say awareness can save your life. Awareness could save your soul. I love that because awareness right now, right now that, that, you know, the people aren't, aren't aware of something and that is the big toe on their right foot. And the moment their moment, you see that awareness takes you to your big toe on your right foot. And now you have one. Did you have one before it? I don't know. But, uh, but awareness, what I, I try to share, with people and teach people is that that's what they captured is our awareness we've got all this tv we've got this that the other thing it's capturing our awareness um they tell us these stories these these henny penny stories you know the, the sky's falling stories you know this is happening that's happening this is happening in the world and we get all emotionally invested in it but the, the real question is, are, are we not co-creating it if we're gods? 
you know, are we not co-creating the problem if we start because our awareness gets pulled to it and then we expand it. Now, well, Ma Master, Jesus, said, Master Jesus did say in the future, ye will become gods. Of course, it was a lowercase g because we have the larger case g, which we all as the lowercase aspire to be. And as I am, you are. Mm -hmm. we're, we are all the end of it. And and in an, in another instance with Zeus, Zeus got jealous <laughs> and he put people into hypnosis and split them in two because he knew they were becoming they were becoming gods like him. And so he split them in two. And my brother, I have seen the split. And I work with the split every day. We're born with God consciousness. We're given another consciousness. And there's the split. Well, and they step across to that God consciousness and they say, you know what? I... I have never been born. I will never die. I am eternal. Led to believe a lie when we see with and not through the eye that was born in a night to perish in a night while the spirit slept in beams of light so we we are that energy behind looking through the eyes when we start identifying with that that's the god within we are the energy taking it all in everyone keith anthony blanchard here center of light radio i'm on this jesus kick tonight i'm loving it I, I, I just love the idea and the parallels. I think that if we looked at only the things that Master Christ said himself, we would truly get it. And one of those things he said is, you would do greater works than I. How is that possible? In a certain model, that is not allowed. But the Master himself says, you would do greater works than I. If we are inferior to his achievements. That is impossible in and of itself. And the woman says, thank you, master. Thank you, master, for healing my kin. Thank you, master, for healing my kin. Paraphrasing, of course, he said, woman, i done no such thing. It's your faith in me that has done the healing. So that faith in all of us is lying in wait you can do it now or you can wait. <laughs> so the master said himself, it wasn't me that did it. It was you. You being the alchemist, tapping into the source that dwells within you. And we'll patiently wait forever. The truth is not in a hurry. Time is the overseer of infinity. <laughs> Keith Anthony Blanchard, Center of Light Radio, going to be right back with my guest, Dwayne Hartman. And we are speaking about awakening the God within you, within me, within we, and suddenly, out of the silence, <laughs> the new world appears, and it requires simply to breathe. guide you in whatever you do. Just remember to breathe and do your very best to live in love. Give in love. Be in love. And love you shall receive.
Welcome back to Center of Light Radio. Lavender Soul right there. Breathe. Breathe is your connection to the light. Breath is your connection to the light. Well, Keith, I breathe every day, all day long. Yes, you do. The more you become conscious of your breath, the more you're able to become conscious of the light. Well, Keith, I see your posts and your presentations all the time. You talk about being in the light. I get it. I get it. Do you really? I hope you do. Because when you're finally in it, Everything in the light is what everyone is looking for. There's nothing that you want. <laughs> There's, you know, the, the darkness is the illusion. There really is no darkness. It's created by our own lack of awareness. We always hear about the light in the light of awareness. Light, awareness. It's your natural state. At this point, Dwayne, I would like, I'll often my future guests ask me the question. I'd love to be on your show. What shall we talk about? Say, no, 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 no. Don't put that responsibility on me. This is your platform. Where would you like to go with your interview with myself, your teachings, what you would like to share with us and the listening audience? And if you would, please give out your contact information now before we get to that segment. Thank you. Well, basically, um, uh, people people can come to my, my website. Uh, it's DwayneHartman.com. Dwayne is spelt my way of, you know, my my name is spelt a little different than others. So it's D-W-A-I-N-E Hartman, H-A-R-T-M-E-N. 
but DwayneHartman.com. They can find me uh, under that same name on Facebook or, uh, you know, where, where, wherever they might be, LinkedIn, whatever, right? Sometimes it's Dr. Dwayne Hartman. Sometimes it's just Dwayne Hartman. But uh, but they can find me. Um, and what I, what I offer people is a coaching program. I, I did all kinds of different things before, you know, uh, but now I've got it honed down to there's an introductory coaching program. You can come in and I work with you. And again, just like what you were saying with your show, Keith, I, they say, well, what do you do? And I, I go, basically, if you want to go from any point A to point B in your spiritual evolution, that's, that's what I do. Uh, it's hard to describe it because I work specifically with you. And, it, you know, I don't force anything on you as far as my teachings I elicit from you your magic because you've had it all along. And, and you know, you know, it. Keith, it's, it's only our own journey. It was like that story of the old, the old man that was painting a didgeridoo and the young boy runs up to him and says, I'm going to paint just like you. And the old man looks at him and he says, no, you won't. It'll kill you. And the boy was in shock. And the old man said, you can only paint like you. And we have people trying to copy what other people are doing, hoping to get enlightenment from that. But this is a personal thank relationship. Thank you very much for that statement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. People want to follow the trend. Like I have been saying recently, looking out on social media, we have all these young bucks and all these long, young does firing off free tarot card readings and 5D. Well, that's the big word, an ascension. And I love it. I love that the world is in a spiritual trend versus it not. And there's a maturation process that needs to take place to create wisdom with these young people. And it's great. And some of these young kids, they're on hold. They're waiting till the day comes that they wave this magic wand so they can say to the world, you know, we are the youth. We're here as a greater incarnation. <clears throat> but I love the idea that we're all waking up. We're all moving towards this place. We're all alchemists. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, Dwayne. Are, they, are there any shortcuts? One was, I would say there is, but not really, but there is. You gave us this toning as I gave this awareness expansion trick. Is there something, people like things. They like immediate things. They like putting something in their mouth and getting the sweet. Is there something you can offer us that would help us to achieve some of that stuff you were talking about? A technique, exercise, meditation, what? Well, that the very first thing that I that I teach everyone is how to drop how to drop into midbrain because you're going to you're going to get your awareness out of the top part of the mind that's the monkey mind and as you practice dropping in just with that a deep breath in hold it to the mental count of three and do you want to do this together uh Keith I'm going to show you how 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 I do this so that others get it now what will happen is is that People will see us doing this, and they'll feel it, right? And so I look at a person, and I ask them to keep their eyes open through this process. And just as best you can, look into my eyes as we do this, because it's kind of like an initiation. There's something that comes off of me, which is a vibrational frequency that you pick up on when we do it. And we just take a deep breath in together, hold it to the mental count of three with our eyes open. Just look at me and slowly, slowly exhale. And now notice that fuzziness that's going on. <laughs> so, and I share with people when they're doing this and they can do this in the mirror with themselves, 
But this fuzziness and all of a sudden the face will start changing and you'll start seeing the non-solidity of everything with your eyes open. You'll start to see that things aren't as solid as you thought. Nor is your beliefs, your attitudes or perceptions about life. They're not solid either. And so when they can shift, so can you shift. But dropping in here and that's starting to happen, that fuzziness, people automatically want to blink their eyes and shake their head because it feels like something's happening. Yes, something's happening. You're coming. <laughs> Damn right something's happening. You're shifting yeah, you to greater degrees of the spirit. Yes. And then and then with that with that process, you're gonna notice that in here you can think better. Your awareness then you put your awareness onto something that you want to have happen. You put your awareness. Okay, science is proven. I like that because, you know, I, I like that funny thing that they say because science is proven. We've been doing it for decades, but, you know, finally science proved it, so it's got to be right, right? Uh, it's just a funny little thing. But we have something that's called uh, mirror neurons, and you can't look at me or I can't look at you without us starting to copy each other. And it just happens. And I developed a technique. I says, well, if, if you and I are copying each other and we're just sitting here talking back and forth, what would happen if I created a, a self out in front of me that was already in the state that I want to attain. And I would see my, <laughs> now it's self-actuated, right? You And you know, you know, Dwayne, Dwayne, the, the, the Buddhists say the very same thing. They say that every time you close your eyes and you think of Hawaii, okay, as soon as you think of it, some essence aspect of yourself is there. The yes. trick is to solidify your consciousness in the believing of, I'm here. And so the idea is to use your will, your faculties of the source, the magic within to truly be there, to self-actualize yourself into another place. We do that all the time. In fact, you forgot about that big toe that Dwayne said earlier. So when you shift to the big toe, you actualize an, a reality, an experience that otherwise you wouldn't have until someone guided you to become aware of your big toe. Or your right ear lobe, or the tip of your nose. Right. You know, if no one is in the forest and the tree falls to the ground, do you actually hear? Is it, is it real? Right. Yeah, and so that's something that, that people will notice when I work with them. I don't say, "Can you do this? Can you see your future self?" I don't say those words because they're loaded words. They're loaded with with the three D environment here of failure. I don't say that. That's where my linguistics training is coming in, right? And so I'll just say, as as you as you see your future self, please describe it to me. And they'll start just to describe it, and it moves right past any resistance from three D. Wow! I, you know, as you as you were saying that, Twain, I thought you were giving me an instruction, and and I thought, and I realized you meant that generally. But as you were saying that, I was, in, fo in fact, following your command through that very, very experience. And I truly zipped right over what is happening now and went into the experience of actualizing. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to describe to you what I saw as my future self. Me yes. sitting in this chair to a greater level, a deeper capacity to touch more people to have more people touch me, I was actually creating this in this moment, or rather, or both tapping into that future potential of myself that I can continue to always lean into until I co come upon that sp that reality. I actually went through the process as you were just describing it. Do you, do you know how many beliefs you just blew? Correct. How many, uh, Correct. How many past? All, all gone because... You actually actualized it. How does that feel to see yourself? How does that feel to see yourself? Fucking fantastic, powerful, liberating. 
that I'm not confined not only to the body, but the ooh, ooh, ah, ah, hoo, 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 monkey mind that wants to dictate to all of us what it says exactly. reality is. I was free in that moment. No. Yeah. No. As you, as you allow yourself to stand close to that, you get those feelings. Because there's that glow about you. You said it was just fucking amazing, right? Fucking power. That was the deliberate word I used because yeah. it commands power. Okay. So as you see yourself in that state and you get close to it, it's going to start bleeding across to you. Right? Now you can step into it and actually, for a moment, just allow yourself to be it. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. You see, Dwayne, I already know all this stuff. I've been knowing this yes. stuff as long as you have. But what's happening because of you and I and this dialogue, we're using this dialogue as an excuse for you and I to come to sandwich together. And in this experience I'm having, which I speak to the hundreds and thousands of guests all the time, and there are certain people that when I dialogue with, it's like we become the same knucklehead. We, <laughs> I'm truly having a reality shift dialoguing with you, really. So, vibration is everything. Tesla said it. Many have said it. Think in terms of vibration, frequency, and what was the third one he said? But I'm saying vibration is everything. You just changed your vibration. Now you just shifted your future timeline. You also changed your past. Because you're freer than that. Just by experiencing that now. So we are trying time travelers in essence. You know, as you <laughs> said it, you said it earlier. You said it happens fast. You want it fast, and there's it's no mistake that you want it fast because it is fast, and we've been sold down this path of it taking long time suffering, which I no longer agree with. I've seen people in one session. I seen a quadriplegic man in one session, quadriplegic, who came in and felt his own power within, just like we were doing here with you, Keith. And he felt his power within, and he says, Dwayne, watch this, because his faith shot right up. He says, Dwayne, watch this. And I said, all right. And he took his hands and he raised them above his head. He says, I haven't done that since I was four years old. I was just, I was crying because that was an absolute miracle to witness in front of me. That isn't me. I didn't do that. He did that. By hell, just being his... a, hell, just being a part of such a, a media transformation, to, to be fortunate to experience someone literally transform right in front of your face. Long yeah. story short, many years ago, I was at a spiritual fair. I had a booth and I was doing a talk. And then another vending lady from across the way came over to me. She said, Keith, I have this distraught lady over here. She can really use your energy, blah, blah. And I said, sure. I'm thinking, here I come to save the day, thinking it was me. And so as soon as I walked upon this lady and she's facing the other way, I come up on her backside and I feel two male dis uh, uh, deceased people. Yeah. And so she says, Keith, my life is so, and I, I, I did not see any of that. I saw just magic and potential all around her. She goes, I don't know how you can see this when everything for me is so dark. So I'll go outside, go outside to take a break, and I was going to come back up. Well, actually, I went outside to take a break. And I'm leaning against the wall, and I realize this has nothing to do with her. I didn't go over there to save her day. I went over there to save mine. And I was sobbing like a beautiful mess. I came up to her, and she goes, oh, my God, Mr. Blanchard, what's the matter? I said, this is not your transformation. This is mine. And I want you to experience and witness what transformation looks like. And we both had an explosion in this alchemy of coming together. And it just started getting greater and greater. And that's what you were describing about you and I. When we come together mm -hmm. with the same intention and the same power and the same goal, it begins to turn over within itself, the zero, the one, the two, the duality, the triality, and so forth. And it gets greater. It's like a biofeedback loop, yes? Yes. 
And we need to be able to go to the zero like your movie talked about. We need to go to the zero to have that. What you, you know, I mean, they, they use all kinds of cliches, zero point energy, or I call it zero point psychology. Nothing equals nothing anymore. We go to that place because, you know, the brain works in in, in a fact in, in a fashion that that this equals that. And when this happens, that happens. And so I, my mantra is nothing equals nothing, right, anymore. It's just zero. And then from zero, I can step back out into the manifestation clear, right, to start working with people, sharing with people. So what I, what I do is help people go back to that zero point and introduce them to that magical inner child that they were. And then from that... Because that magical inner child was bang on. Nobody listened. Nobody acknowledged. And that we have a whole society of people suffering because nobody acknowledged that child, the original you. And by God, that's what I do in sessions is recognize you and see you and help you to come out. Because that magic, that magic is the core magic. And then everything after that is suffering because we're not who we truly are. We suffer in di various degrees because we're, we're, we're trying, trying to live a life not even being who we truly are. You know, you had just said a minute ago about, I guess we could call it the monkey mind, when this happens, this is my response. This is how things go. This is the dynamic of the course I should take. I remember years ago, I was playing music at a nightclub. We were about to start 15, 20 minutes. I just got finished tuning my guitar, put it down. And I'm walking across a dimly lit stage. And at that place in my life, I would pick up every piece of currency I'd find on the ground. Penny, dime, say, thank you, God. I recognize this simple symbol of abundance. And in this dimly lit room, I look down and I see a penny. And I reached down to pick up the penny to put it in my pocket so I could say, thank you, Spirit, for the abundance in my life through the symbol. And I go to pick it up, and I couldn't. And I tried again, and I couldn't. And I tried again, and I couldn't. I tried even just to scratch it off, and I realized it wasn't a penny. It was a piece of gum. And my mind became shattered because everything I held steadfastly to that it had to be was not. Yeah. Completely just changed everything for me uh, an absolute blowout transition completely what do you yeah so how do we shift to those states Dwayne what are ways that we can simply go from here of course we did some toning we did the open-eyed meditation or there anything else that you would like to offer that can help us yeah. put us in that space, that stargate. <clears throat> Besides coming to see me, because I... It, <laughs> you go, bro, honest, I love it. I love it. No, I love it. I get it. But but honestly, it's fast. Um, and it's, it's everything, like we talked about before, it's everything. Once you, once you experience it, you realize, like, I get, you know, in sessions, there's lots of tears sometimes. And it's not tears of pain and suffering. Sadness, it's a grieving process of, oh my God, I've always been here with myself. What was I doing? When they feel that love inside of themselves expand and, and they step into this energy of, I can manifest things. I, I am this. That it's, it's, it's as paramount as, like you say, there was a tremendous shift when you reached down to pick up that piece of gum, right? It was like, boom. And, you know, it just, it, it goes through your timeline like, like a wave. So what if you, so, so the thing that I want to, to make very, very clear to people, it's identity. Who are you? Are you, are you source energy? 
or are you this being that's running around from nine to doing a nine to five and you know what I mean? All your whole identity is wrapped up in that. And afraid of source you? energy. And afraid. Of source energy. And, and calling it a blasphemy thing to want to be it. I mean, hello, wake up. Wow. You know what? What just this dawned your... upon me, what just dawned upon me, Dwayne, is calling, for example, being afraid of source energy or doing something that is not congruent with source energy, people call that blasphemy. I call that a bullshit way to be lazy about doing the work that it takes to connect to your divine parent. So in other words, if this is out of mm -hmm. my norm, if this is out of my norm and it bucks the current of what I was dogmatically instilled with, it's blasphemy. So I got to do any work and accept the fact that I'm inferior. Yes. And isn't that what inferior does? And right. we wonder why we have postponement so much postponement oh i got to do this i got to do that first i can't do that i can't get to this now i got to do this over here or there's many many levels of postponing the inevitable at some point in time you have to come in and own your related to god that you are a son and daughter of god that you are god itself because nothing in this whole system was ever built that wasn't God taken from God itself so by default you are it but it's that perception shift it's the perception shift from looking looking uh, with the eye and going just a little farther back and becoming that energy that looks through the eye that has never been born nor will it ever die, it's eternal. Humanity needs to play in that area and start associating to that energy within each, each and every one of us. This is the release. This is the very thing that all of it has been designed so you never find. So the time is yeah. now, this is the it. This is, this, the final, is it. this is the final act. Not meaning is, that it's never going to come back around. I don't want to ride this roller coaster again. Every time I, do, I love roller coasters, some of them make you nauseous. And that's okay. I enjoyed it the first 10 times. I want to go to another place. Maybe I want to go to the yes. Ferris, wheel, Ferris wheel that's a little more peaceful and calm without all of the exaggerated, violent, agitated, aggressive energy being yes. thrown around in a roller coaster car. And we're we're tricked into creating a monkey mind and a drama drama filled mind so that we because they know that we manifest our own reality. We know that our vibrational frequency, what we think life is, manifests itself. And so we never you know now here's another thing I really want to share is that there was a big war on the the, the imagination. A big war on the fact that we had an imagination and to start, and we don't even realize it. We don't even know the depth of this. But a war on imagination because imagination is a portal out of the matrix. And this imagination, if we hear, you know, people will even say the statement, oh, it's just imagination, as if it was a dirty word. Like, what's going on with this? Because there's been a whole entrainment for people to go up into their head, not their heart, but up in their head and quite a bit over to the left. Okay? Now, without intuition, which is right brain, without intuition, you can't fight yourself out of a wet paper bag. You're trapped. So, People over here in the right brain, when they go to their right brain for a change, they can start, just like you did, manifesting their future self already well. But that's imagination. And did you know that the original word for faith, that, that they didn't have a word for imagination then, and now it's imagination. you got to have faith. Well, faith is imagination. You've got to be able to see it. 
You've got to be able to experience it to perceive it. That is the that is your your initiation into the next step. And a it comes bl- from a you. blind man, a blind man once said, You don't have to have physical sight to climb Mount Everest. Instead, you need vision. John Mm -hmm. Lennon, what a genius. The song, Imagine. Imagine all the people. Imagine there's no heaven, no earth. Imagine no religion too. So he is so in his essence writing that song in the key of C, very important. The key of C, the natural key. The natural foundation of the universal harmonic. Imagine. So he is, through song and lyric, placing within you an open door (laughs) to become a catalyst for the future experience. Dwayne, I had a a lucid dream many years ago that I went back to this little kid Mm -hmm. at school, leaning against the locker, sitting down, somewhat humdrum, and the kid looks up to the older me going back in time, and I nudge him with my foot and said, listen, buddy, I'm you from the future. Everything's going to be just fine. Exactly. Imagination. And what, and what happened? What happened to you by you doing that and calming him then in the past? What happened to you in your present moment when you did that? I needed to go back in time to reassure the younger Keith that that was going to take place so I could become the me now. It was a shake hands contract. I'm going to be this kid that does this. Now let's go back together and integrate my inner youth, the innocence, the the intuition which children naturally have. To the yes, it was totally an agreement. It was an it was alchemy. <laughs> it is. It was an amalgamation of my younger self and my older self coming into a space of connectivity. Yes. And and how did it change your present moment and your future by doing that? Because what what Keith's talking about here is, this is the crucial work. But it's to free yourself and not get caught in doing that work over and over again, which so many people get lost in. And they're just lost in a spiral there because they're manifesting more of it. But you actually went in, did the work, and got out. And then experienced a shift in your life. What was So to answer the question that you somewhat asked was what was it like what did i gain from it was when i woke up that morning i was already receiving the grace and the gift because one i was Mm -hmm. going wow that was such a fucking trip so i'm automatically thrown in this state of spiritual expansive shock and awe that was the gate that was opened of course a few hours later the next day the next week the next month the next year the experience somewhat faded but the impact that it had in the waking up, the waking up of it all. And just being in that gate that was the fate that brought me to this place in my life. So thank you for the reminder of that, Dwayne. The, 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 the thing is, is that it doesn't really fade. It just becomes a new normal. <laughs> that is so exactly what it is. Thank you for that. That's exactly what it, that's the amalgamation that took place because of the agreement between my younger and my older self. Same when I went to see Sathya Sai Baba in India, long story short, he's coming up to me and I'm sitting on the concrete. I asked for a blessing all day about a certain something. He was facing the other way. I asked him telepathically. He turns around, stops what he's doing, come over, and he blesses a Joppa Mala bead in my hand. And... I saw myself, well, I was me looking up at the master and then my perspective shift. And I saw myself as the witness behind the seeing of his eyes, looking at the same Keith on the ground, looking up. So there was this bio, this feedback loop that expanded. And I saw the creation of the universe, not so much in the form of seeing as we know it, but explosions and light. That was true, but it was a different way of seeing and knowing. So I had this happen twice in my life, and I never thought, never thought about how the two are actually connected. Younger Keith, physical human, to older Keith, physical human, to Keith as an aspiring spiritual aspirant, to the master that was reawakening me yet again. 
Thank you for triggering that, sir. Simple shift in perception. A uh, shift in perception. You know, and for people at home, you know, there you are sitting in the chair watching this. But at the same time, can you imagine yourself floating up like a balloon to the ceiling and seeing yourself? See that person there who's, who has worked so hard to get where they are. Can you have compassion for that person? You know, and then feel something and then float back into your body, right? Now, vibration changes things, doesn't it? By your vibration by being in touch with the younger you changed. Changed your reality, right? Now, you also witnessed today that seeing your future self and experiencing something that you desire to experience as a vibratory frequency, you felt that and you brought it into your present moment while well, it's already changing your future. But people like to say it can't be that quick. It is that quick because you're doing it all the time. You're always making assumptions about life here and there, having a vibration about it and recreating it like Groundhog Day. <laughs> right? Dwayne, we are at the bottom of the show. Would you like to oh, give we up are. your cotton? We are. Isn't that amazing how time flees when you are in Wow. The right? An hour and a half. <laughs> Just like that. Um, I have another presentation, or I would be I would be on with you for the four hour duration, and I would like to invite you back again soon. And I get the feeling, oh, well, I have a imagination. It says you and I are going to shake hands doing this a little more often. I, I, we can create our whatever. I'm just loving the dialogue between you and I. Please give out your contact information again to our audience, and also leave us with a closing thought. My. The best way to get a hold of me is to just go to DwayneHartman.com, www.Dwayne, D-W-A-I-N-E, Hartman, H-A-R-T-M-A-N.com. Uh, and you can find me with that name on Facebook as well. Um, I'm always chatting people up and talking to them, you know, on Facebook as well. Um, make friends with me there. <clears throat> Statement, what? We're... We're much freer than we have been led to believe. And we have been led to believe this for a reason so that we can stay trapped. Trapped in an identity that's not even ours. And I know, you know, sitting there listening to me, that you also have memory of having a different identity when you were young. And that you came in with a different identity. Some of you know that you're here to do something great, but you just can't get at it because of this hypnotic identity that's going on. That's what I do is I help you smile again with your own power, your own ability. So I, like I say, come get your power back, right? Dwayne, there are three components to this show. I asked you, how did you get into this? You said, I came in with it. We did the, the show. And my final question to you, sir, in the paragraph is, what is God, source, creator, essence? What is it to you? How would you describe that? Like we can, but give me your best attempt. It is, it is life itself expanding. And so back in the, back in the day, we heard, you know, you know, Moses went to the mountain and we heard from the burning bush, I, I am that which I am. And when they retranslated it, they found out it didn't say that. It said, I am that which I'm becoming. And the only way for it to be, to be in that expansion is that you and I and everyone else is God becoming, sending that information back to source so it knows what it is, and it becoming our next experience. And so when the, the, the more we go up, the more we find out we're it. <laughs> we're in this relationship with God itself. That's almost we blasphemy to declare that we're not it. 
That yeah, takes exactly. God out of the equation arrogantly, thinking Thank that we can do it. this on our own. Yes, we are the it, but humbling ourselves to the it is the doorway to the consciousness of the it. Yes? You know, I, I one time, real <laughs> quick here, one time, one time I explained to people, you know, maybe you should just, you know, do a meditation where you give God a hug. And wow. they freak right out on page. You know, they freaked right out about that. God doesn't need a hug. God doesn't. Really? I just think about it, you know. You know, it's funny you say that because I've often played with the imagination that when I'm on Oprah and she asked me, what's God to you? I would stand up and give her a hug. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Dwayne, thank you, bro. Let's do this again soon. I am completely thrown into a cosmic whirlpool of alchemy. I'll see you soon, Bless brother. You. Fantastic. <laughs> Everyone, okay. Mr. Dwayne Hartman, tonight our interview was titled Awakening the God Within. The one that lives within you, I am in my Father, my Father's in me, and I am in you. That which lives inside of you creates worlds and universes. Chew on that stick of gum for a little while. And about an hour from now, I'm going to be doing a presentation titled Earth Medicine. I'm not going to give it all away. I'm going to vessel the entire experience. I have no notes. I look forward to seeing you there. Peace, love, and always remember, not only live in the light, you are the light. Accept your divine birthright. Be a blissful human being. Peace, love, and see you soon.